Hi, I'm Janet Bufton with Adam Smith Works. Hi, I'm Lauren Hall, Associate Professor of Political Science at the Rochester Institute of Technology. And this is the Smith Questionnaire. So Lauren, I'm just going to jump right in. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so the first question I have is, what, would you rather be loved or lovely? Uh, well, according to Smith, you'd rather be loved, but I think I would rather be loved. Um, I think though, of course, and this might be Burke and not Smith, that in <laughs> order to be loved, you should be lovely. And so this is the importance of, of, uh, making yourself sort of compatible with the people that you, uh, that you surround yourself with in, in a variety of moral and, uh, maybe mostly moral ways. Yeah, cool. Uh, wealth of nations or theory of moral sentiments? Oh, of course, theory of moral sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if Adam Smith had a dog, what kind of dog would it be? For some reason, the first one that came to mind was that, uh, but it might just be because I think it's like a Scottish terrier. Um, so I, I, I'm picturing a terrier-like dog though. So either okay. a Scottish terrier or something small but he would train it to not be yappy. Yeah, okay. That makes sense, because he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, he's a busy guy. Uh, what is the best antidote to the torpor induced by the division of labor? <laughs> um, let's see. Well, for Smith, of course, it's education, right? Getting out and uh, um, having new ideas come in. Uh, I think this is, Absolutely. I mean, and this, I think, goes, so do you want the Smith answer or so, sort of my answer via the lens of Smith or Ooh, whatever I, I, yeah, I guess whatever, whatever you think is uh, the answer you want to give. Okay. But if you feel like you have to like say, this isn't me, this is Smith, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, well, so Smith talks about education and, and I think that that's, uh, that's obviously a really important piece of this. And he talks about sort of continuing education kinds of things. But I also think this, this points to the sort of, one of the reasons I like Smith so much is his focus on sort of the radical sociability of human beings, this radical sociality. And so the way to get out of that torpor of the division of labor is to be around other people, to engage with other people, to talk to other people. Um, and I've been thinking about this more in quarantine where, you know, we talk about like the isolation of parenthood, for example, and, and how uh, when women, for example, had to do very mundane tasks like spin wool and things, they would talk to each other. <laughs> uh, and so that kind of intellectual and social connection, I think, helps uh, enormously. So it doesn't even have to be something as formal as education. It's just connecting with other people's minds. Yeah, I like that. Uh, would you rather have a beer in a pub or a champagne in a salon with Smith? I mean, I really like champagne, but I think I would probably rather have beer in a pub. Uh, he seems like the kind of, he seems a bit socially awkward and I I suspect that he would not be at home in a salon. Mm. Um, and so I think if you really wanted to chat with him, you'd get a beer and go to the local pub. Okay. What do you pursue for pleasure that was once followed from necessity? Probably working out actually. So mm. when I was growing up, my family were all very big exercisers and I was not. And so it was something that I sort of avoided like the plague. Um, and then as I got older, I just found that I needed, you know, I, just for health reasons, I started working out more. Um, and then once I developed the habit of working out, I found it something mm. that I absolutely enjoy. Um, I find myself craving physical activity, uh, and um, and it's been very important for my mental health uh, as I get older. So that, I think, is the most obvious one for me. Okay. What's something Adam Smith is known for, but by which you're totally unimpressed? <laughs> well, this is going to probably annoy a lot of my economist friends. I mean, I think the the sort of... Smith being known primarily as an economist, I think, confuses the very nature of what he's doing as a, as a thinker, right? So he's a moral philosopher. He wants to understand how people 
engage with each other in communities. Um, and so from that perspective, it's not necessarily about sort of the economics. And I know people define economics in all sorts of broad ways, but it's not necessarily about sort of transactional kinds of activity. Um, it's just about social, human social activity. So um, this is not to poo-poo the wealth of nations or his economics, broadly speaking, but I think thinking of Adam Smith as primarily an economist really undermines the breadth and the importance of his work as a whole. Uh, what does your impartial spectator look like? <laughs> Ooh. Huh. Um, now that one's really interesting. Um, so I'm actually a recent convert to Catholicism after being raised in a uh, Buddhist slash atheist household. Um, and so growing up, I think my impartial spectator was sort of a kind of like fuzzy Buddha character or something. I mean, there was this kind of like um, uh, person off in the, in the background. Um, but now it's sort of a much more um, amorphous kind of, I mean, it's sort of God in a way, right? It's sort of like, what, what are you actually doing? Um, uh, so, I mean, it's, it's a big impartial spectator in that, in that sense. Um, and maybe, maybe not entirely impartial in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't think I think of uh, him or her as looking like anything in particular, maybe infinity, <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of guilt. Oh. <laughs> it's bringing a lot of guilt. <laughs> yeah. So related question, what was the last thing your impartial spectators said to you? Or maybe not so impartial, as you said. Um, huh. Actually, probably the last thing my impartial spectator said last night was, do you really need this second margarita? <laughs> um, and uh, then the very partial spectator part of my brain said yes. Uh, um, yeah, that's, that's usually the question that happens. <laughs> that's the most recent one anyway. That's okay. Um, okay, so last question. If an afterlife if exists, and we just, uh, you're, you're, uh, when you see Adam Smith, I guess I'll say for you, <laughs> what do you want to talk to him about? Oh, goodness. Um, well, again, from what I understand, he's kind of socially awkward, uh, so I'm not sure how, I, I always, I never quite know how to approach people like him um, about ideas. Um, well, I think actually what I'd want to know is what he planned to do with the lectures on jurisprudence, but didn't, fig you know, didn't finish. So I think I'd want to sit down with him and get the sort of, uh, get a couple of his, his lectures on jurisprudence and then talk to him about how that piece, how he saw that piece fitting in with, uh, with the theory of moral sentiments and the wealth of nations. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be a big one. <laughs> <laughs> All Ambitious, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. I mean, presumably you've got a lot of time. Yes, it, literally <laughs> eternity, right? Once we get out of purgatory, we're all probably going to be there for a while. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you.